discover calligraphy and the charm of it all. Hello everyone, welcome to the Tao of Chinese Calligraphy. Let's meet our three distinguished guests who will reveal the backstories of some Chinese calligraphy masterpieces. They are Central Academy of Fine Arts, Professor Chu Zhengzhong, Minzu University of China's Professor Meng Man, Vice President of the China Calligraphers Association, Ye Pei Gui. We also have 30 calligraphy enthusiasts with us. Welcome to the show. So let's look at the calligraphy classic. Lan Tun Ji Shi by Wang Shi Chu from the Eastern Jin Dynasty. About 1600 years ago, during China's Eastern Jin Dynasty, Wang Shi Zhe, one of the greatest calligraphers in Chinese history, wrote Lan Ting Ji Shu, or preface to the poems composed at the Orchid Pavilion. This masterpiece has been held in great esteem by calligraphy masters ever since. By studying and copying the piece repeatedly, they have created a connection with its author that transcends both time and space. It is early spring in the year 353 AD, and we as friends are all gathered here, having fun together and drinking some wine. We behold the vast immensity of the universe and appreciate the diversity of species. Thereby we refresh our views and free our souls. How infinite is the cheer. As the ancients said, birth and death are two ultimate events. Yet, it is foolish of me to equate death with life, long life with short life. Endowed with great mountains and lofty peaks, we are surrounded by flourishing branches and tall bamboo. We regale ourselves with poetic expression of our feelings and emotions. We enjoy wine and song together with friends. Bye. Order of the Tang Emperor. I am copying Lang Ting Zhi Zhu. The first stroke of the character Sui is hollow, while another has a broken stroke. So we can see that Wang Shi Chu wrote it with a clear mind. Every time I see this work, it is like I am right there. The calligraphy and scenery are so beautiful. No wonder the Tang Emperor praised it as perfect and always had the work copied. It's a masterpiece. Among all of the calligraphers, I have not found one that can or has impressed me yet. Yet I regard that Lang Ting Zhizhu as the finest calligraphy in the world. It is elegant and beautiful placid twists and edges that are as sharp as a knife. Such superb execution could only be achieved by Wang Shi Chu. It's foolish of me to equate death with life. Long life with short life. 
he understands that life is very short and asks us to be diligent and live our lives without regret. We behold the vast immensity of the universe and appreciate the diversity of species. Thereby, we refresh our views and let free our souls. Innovation should still follow the proper norms of calligraphy. I respect Wang Shi Zhu for his loyalty and filial piety. A calligraphy work reflects the character of its author. The proper norms of calligraphy are found in Lang Ting Ji Zhu. People's emotions stay the same. We still, we still have, have much to consider about the life and the death and the appreciation of the poetry and the father. Why is this masterpiece, Lan Tun Ji Shi, considered the world's finest example of running script? First of all, the Chinese running script, represented by Wang Shizhu and his masterpiece Lang Tingji Shi, came at a critical period in history. Running script had already matured by then and developed to a very high level. A masterpiece was destined to be created during this period. Second, the calligraphy in Lang Tingji Shi is truly at a high level in Chinese calligraphy history. Its brush strokes, its layout and font structure are incredibly rare and even unprecedented. Third, it established the classical norms of Chinese calligraphy, which are to be well proportioned and balanced. In the course of 1,600 years, these norms have become the mainstream aesthetic in calligraphy. Wang Shizhu is regarded as the saint of calligraphy in China. In fact, there's a story behind all of this. Part of it can be attributed to the fact that Emperor Taizong of Tang was an avid collector of Wang Shizhu's works. It is said that the original Lan Tingji Shu was buried alongside Emperor Taizong. What we see today is a copy of the Tang Dynasty calligrapher Fang Cheng Su. More than 15 versions were copied and traced by other calligraphers during the Tang Dynasty period. So for people like us today, can you tell us how to appreciate Lan Tun Ji Shi? A work of calligraphy would be very boring if all the characters follow one after another in a very strict way, with really strict rules in a uniform manner. Why is Lang Ting Ji Zhu's composition so brilliant and so subtly beautiful? If we draw an axis through any lines of the text, we can easily see that they are all parallel to each other and yet still have subtle curves. Also, the vertical lines are aligned in order, but with small differences here and there. It's the slight and natural variations in its composition that bring the whole piece to life. It's a seamless work of art. When writing running script, it is easy to lose control of the strokes. But if we look at this work in detail, we can tell that nothing is neglected in terms of writing skill. The attention to detail is immaculate. For example, the Chinese character Sheng, or diversity, in the lower part of this Chinese character, there are two short vertical strokes and then one horizontal stroke to complete it. Please pay more attention to this part. Take a look at how one vertical stroke extends over the lower part of the horizontal stroke and then undulates up and down the two strokes to create amazingly smooth overlaps. The ups and downs in his brushwork are well laid out. 
you can feel the fluctuations and the rhythm of his writing when you look at this. Beneath the tranquil surface, there are living pulses like the constant rise and fall of waves. This gives a sense of peace overall on its surface. That's where we can appreciate the real beauty of Lung Ting Ji Shu. We all know that this is a masterpiece of Chinese calligraphy art, but there is also a literary elegance to be found in this masterpiece. Isn't that right, Professor Meng? Yes, that's very right. It's a beautiful written piece. Let's look in at the detail. The first half is about the scenery. Among the lush bamboo forests secluded in the mountains, the sky is clear and a mild breeze greets us. What a beautiful spring day. He then moves on to reflections. In an instant, these will have become the past. Birth and death are the two ultimate events. The beautiful scenery around us will be gone in time. We will also be gone someday. How can this be our reality? What should we do about it? There was a prevalent idea in his day that life and death were the same illusion. This idea was originally an important part of Taoist philosophy but it was often misinterpreted as a passive attitude towards life, giving up everything. However, Wang Shichu argued that we cannot turn a blind eye to challenges since we are awakened to life by the fear of death. People of that time left us some great spiritual wealth. They inspired us to look outward and explore nature and look inward to examine our deepest emotions. Lang Ting Zhu is a reflection of this spirit. It depicts the beauty of nature and landscapes at the time and ponders on our love for life despite its brevity, encouraging us to be strong-minded and optimistic. Recently, an Italian astronaut shared on social media a group of photos she took from the International Space Station when it flew over China. She quoted the following text from Lan Chun Ji Shu. We behold the vast immensity of the universe and appreciate the diversity of species. Thereby, we refresh our views and free our souls, and indeed, this is true happiness. Wang Shi Chu would never have imagined that his words and thoughts expressed at a meeting would resonate with a foreigner and a foreigner in space at that more than 1,000 years later. It's incredible. As Professor Meng said, life is so short compared to the vast universe, endless time and boundless space. But the classics can endure through time and space and shine with eternal light. Now let's move on to the next round of Master's Thumbs Up to learn more about Wang Shi Chu's work. Lan Tun Ji Shu occupies a special place in the hearts and minds of generations of Chinese calligraphy enthusiasts. Almost everyone who learns Chinese calligraphy must have copied this work for practice, including our 30 contestants here. The following question is about this piece. It's called Spot the Difference in Calligraphy. We will select one lucky contestant to join us in this round. My name is Zhou Zhengle. I'm a master student in calligraphy at the Beijing Language and Culture University. Here's the question. Now we're seeing a modified version of Lan Chun Ji Shu, copied by Feng Chengsu. Please find the characters that don't belong in their original in each of the first five columns you see here on screen. You may begin. Uh, the first character in the first column should be young. Please go on. In the second column, uh, it's the character Ji. Uh, in the next column, it's the sixth character, Shao. In the fourth column, it's the character Mao. Then it's the character Liu in the fifth column. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. Okay, everyone, let's see if his answers are correct or not. Here are the correct answers. Yang in the first column, Ji in the second, Xiao in the third, Mao in the fourth, and Liu in the fifth. You got them all correct. Congratulations. Thank you. That's amazing. How many times have you copied the masterpiece Lan Chun Ji Shu? I think maybe at least a hundred times. I magnify it to study the details. This way, I can trace the strokes of each character very clearly. To understand how the strokes were executed is important. 
since we are learning from chasing instead of just duplicating Lang Ting Zhezhe's original work. Could you tell us the differences between the modified version and the original? To be honest, some differences are easy to tell at a glance. Like the first character, Yong, and the fourth character, Mao. When you're familiar with this piece, you can tell that the character Mo reveals the distinctive style of Lung Ting Ji Shu from the first to the last stroke. There's a continuous, consistent flow that is steady throughout the whole character. Despite what seems like breaks, the lines unfold effortlessly and rhythmically. However, the modified character looks rigid with connected strokes. It lacks the natural and beautiful flow of the original. This is a key difference, pretty typical. Wow, true professionals really know their stuff. It's intriguing for us amateurs too. <laughs> Thank you, Professor Ye. Now our contestants will copy Lan Chun Ji Shu to pay tribute to this masterpiece and the author of this piece of art. Copying this work, I want to know what we should pay most attention to. Please tell me what's the key. Since the masterpiece Lang Ting Ji Shu is highly complex, it can't be done easily and simply in a single go. Rather, we should set short-term goals. For example, on the first attempt, I will focus on the precise movement of the brush tip. The next focus would be on the continuity of the strokes. And lastly, the variation in the character structures. Step by step, we break down the challenge to achieve better results with repeated long-term practice. The coordination of our eyes, hands, and mind takes time and effort. When you copy a piece of calligraphy, you should observe and imagine the brush movements at the time of writing. You should lead the brush with your mind. This helps with visualizing the calligrapher's intention as much as possible in order to recreate. Only when your approach is that intentional can you produce work that mirrors the original? Mm. Now let's take a look at the copies our contestants just finished. Over a thousand six hundred years have passed. Lan Chun Ji Zhu remains a classic much admired and studied by generations of calligraphy enthusiasts. For our show, The Tao of Chinese Calligraphy, we have gathered just like Wang Shi Chu and his friends did over a thousand years ago to pay special tribute to this masterpiece. We'll select some of the works by our 30 contestants here with us to create a new and special version of our interpretation of Lan Chun Ji Shu. It's stamped with a special seal design for the show. Thank you for joining us. You've been watching The Tao of Chinese Calligraphy, a show dedicated to showcasing masterpieces from the history of Chinese calligraphy. Join us again next time.